Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. How can your refrigerator and a vial of life make all the difference in an emergency? Find out about the Brevard County Vial of Life program and why taking a few moments of preparation can make a life-saving difference. Heidi Kuchenbacker, Executive Director of Hibiscus Court Assisted Living and Memory Care, guests on today's program to explain. I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors of Brevard. Welcome to Helping Seniors Television. I get the pleasure of sitting in for Joe Steckler, our president and founder. And today we're going to have a topic called Vial of Life. And you may be familiar with this or you may not be, but this is worth finding out why this is important to do this. And we're going to talk about why having the Vial of Life in your house can make all the difference and perhaps even save your life. And our guest today is Heidi Kuchenbacker, who in who is actually the executive director of Hibiscus Court. Welcome. Thank you. Good to have you here. But you also spend a lot of time because this is such an important project. And if we were going to start off with uh, explaining to somebody right off the bat, what is Vial of Life? Well, it's Vial of Life and Life being an acronym for Life Saving Information for Emergencies. It, it's just that simple. The vial of life is a vial. the vial. <laughs> um, so I carry one with me to show people because they've never heard of them before. Right. Um, they're um, an information packet um, we'll go through. Yeah. But they are, uh, Brevard County Fire Rescue is trained to look for a vial of life. And if someone has an emergency situation where they can't speak for themselves, this is going to speak for you. Yeah, and we're going to go quite in depth about this and how to fill out your form correctly so it really can help you at the time of need if the need should ever arise. But let's start, let's back up, let's rewind the film and let's talk about safety at home. And let's put ourselves in the position of a first responder who just gets a call, they're supposed to respond to such and such an address and so they're off and running and they walk in and I think you said a, a, a good example to talk about is maybe somebody was cooking dinner and something happened, they fell, they hit their head, now they're unconscious and there's nobody else at home. And so the first responder walks in and they're trying to figure out all of these things to make sure that this person is safe, they're getting ready perhaps to transport them to the hospital, but they have no idea who the person is, who their doctor is, what kind of medications they're on, what things they're allergic to, and all of these different things. How does a first responder even start to work with those things? Besides, it's like a vet. The, the pet can't explain what's going on. And the first responder has to look for the obvious things. But then there's things that, that would really help them to know. Uh, well, absolutely. And our, our fire rescue and Brevard is very well trained. They know what to look for. Um, should somebody not have a vial, but the vial makes things quicker. In health crisis decisions, you want to be quick. Yes. You don't want to have people have to go look for medications in your cupboard. Um, to find out, maybe they won't even find out that you're allergic to latex gloves that they're going to touch you with right mm -hmm. there on the spot. But when, when a first responder walks into a situation, regardless of the situation, they're already behind because you wouldn't have called them mm -hmm. if you already hadn't established there's a safety issue happening right. in the first place. So while our guys are, and, and men and women of, of Brevard County Fire Rescue and the local municipalities as well, um, are very well trained they are going to lose time. Yeah. You know, imagine that person's had a stroke. Imagine mm -hmm. that person's had a heart attack. All they can do is get you, you know, your, your breathing back on track and make sure that they can at least have you in a specific, you know, as far as saving your life, right? Mm -hmm. So looking, you don't want them to slow down because they got to find out what meds you're on. You know, they don't, you don't want them to slow down or, or they probably won't slow down. For Fido, who's, you know, mm -hmm. not going to get fed tonight or tomorrow when you don't come home from the hospital, right. that information, have it handy, is going to help the entire situation. Yeah. You see, people don't uh, often understand that we live in Brevard County. Helping seniors in Brevard is a 501c3 Florida nonprofit. And part of what we do as an organization is we operate the area senior information helpline, which is 321-473-7770. It's 321-473-7770. 
And our organization, we get calls all the time from different referring agencies, but we also get a lot of direct calls too from people who are trying to get assistance with things. And fortunately, most of the calls we get, they're not the 911 calls. They require a call back, somebody do some research, get connected. But you can imagine if you're a first responder and you're walking in and you're trying to get breathing going and all these things, you don't have a lot of time to figure out. So you have to be really fast about it. And we live in a county where we always use the statistic that it's more than one in four people are over the age of 65. And if you wanna use AARP standards, Every other person you meet in Brevard is over 50 plus. So we live in an, a, a, in an aging society here on the Space Coast of Florida. And this is probably one of the reasons why the, uh, uh, the agencies have teamed up to put together a Vial of Life. Now, who, who's, the, who's leading the initiative for Vial of Life? So Brevard County Fire Rescue has had this available for years. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very progressive in that thought uh, to begin with, as well as the other municipalities have been doing something like it for quite a while. The issue has always been who uses it, who mm -hmm. fills it out, who understand what's supposed to be on the form. Mm -hmm. um, and so people have given them out and they've ended up in the back seat right. or on the table with all the mail mm -hmm. um, and nobody completes the circuit, if you will. Right. Um, so in an effort to try to reduce readmissions to hospitals mm -hmm. and to improve communication and transitions in healthcare, mm -hmm. which is a vital piece of this, um, we looked at overall how our county was doing in that regard. Um, hospitals and nursing homes are, are measured um, for quality and for um, reimbursement mm -hmm. on how many readmissions they have. So there's right. a lot of attention to that. You read about it in the paper. Sure. People talk about it quite a lot. Um, so one of the measures is readmissions to hospitals. So out of 16,000 people in Brevard County that hit the ER across our, our great county, um, almost 3,000 of them will be back in 30 days. Right. That's a lot. Wow. So we looked at, you know, that's, that's and in, in that number, one in four or two in four of those people will be back within a week. Oh, my goodness. So if we don't have the proper information going to the healthcare provider to make a decision, then we can't stop the cycle. Mm -hmm. And we found that our biggest issue was not so much hospitals talking to nursing homes mm -hmm. being readmitted. It was people going home. Ah. that needed the assistance. So not people in assisted living. We have a nurse there that can can find out, oh, I, are you sure that's the med you're on? Do mm -hmm. you know that's for that or this is for this? We, we, we can catch those things right. in the healthcare. But when somebody goes home and maybe it's a husband that takes home an elderly wife mm -hmm. and you know they get home and they say, oh, she's on XYZ med. I have that. I can just continue to use that. But it's at a dose that's not therapeutic, right? right? right. Because they change something in the hospital. Sure. Um, so that information has to go both ways. But if we can't get the proper information into the ERs, then we can't expect them to be able to treat someone without the information. Yeah, because it's, it, it's one thing if you're in a situation where there's a family member who maybe knows all this thing, but that's that would seem to be like a small percentage of the cases. A lot of times they're either going to be responding to somebody who's living alone or maybe it's two elderly people and, and there, there's some confusion about which are the current medicines or what the allergies are. Or worse yet, you know, maybe it's a neighbor who's responded and they don't have, I don't know what Mrs. So-and-so takes. I have no clue. Right. And so there needs to be a system for that. And that's exactly what the Vial of Life is, is there to do, isn't it? Well, it is. And it was an existing system. So we have every first responder in the county knows what these are. Yeah. So we're already ahead of the game. So one of the people behind this initiative is Teresa Russell, who is with Adult Protective Services mm -hmm. of the uh, DCF. And most people, it's funny because for those of us who are not intrinsically in the in the aging business directly, we don't know things. We know, we think when somebody says DCF, we're thinking about the people who are trying to protect the interests of children, mm -hmm. but we don't understand that under Florida law, seniors are also considered vulnerable a vulnerable population. And so there is an adult protective services division of DCF that, that really works hard to ensure safety of seniors in our area. And so that's one of the reasons I think from, from what, what Teresa has seen and all the different work that she's been involved with over the years, why this is also an important program. And from where you sit, you understand the benefit that people get in an assisted living environment where there is somebody who is kind of watching what's going on and knows habits and, and is really there in a position to be of some help. 
But somebody living alone, this is a tough, tough thing for them. Oh, sure. I mean, it could just be as simple as not being able to read the prescription. Right. You know, um, so I, I, you know, and to Teresa's credit, she's been quite the champion. I call her the cheerleader for a vial of life Um, because we do think of adult protective services as children. But um, even those of us that know it exists for seniors and any healthcare workers are certainly well versed in that. We think of abuse, neglect and exploitation, Mm -hmm. um, which is certainly an avenue that they are incredibly helpful in. But what we don't see is who does the hospital call when there's nobody? Right. Right. The, this person's family has all passed away. They didn't have any children. And now they're in the ER. They call Teresa Russell right. on DCF because somebody has to help this person because they can't do it on their own. Yeah. But I was going to say, that's a real question for them is, is when the first responder or even when they get to a hospital situation and I know the first question they, they want to know is like, well, what medicines are they, are they taking? What allergies they have? So we make sure we don't make anything worse, you know, from that standpoint. And so that's why we want to talk and, and we're going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to talk now a little bit about the actual vial of life. And so uh, you've seen the one, you've seen what the vial of life actually looks like. This is one that I've actually already opened up and we're going to talk about the contents. Where does somebody keep this in their house and why? So the process for the vial of life, um, as it looks like it should be a cold cream container. It is not. Um, in the healthcare world, we kind of joke around. It looks like it could be a urine specimen. Not <laughs> for those things. Um, it contains a bunch of uh, different things. First of all, it contains a form um, that is just a one piece of paper. Uh, and that's where your vital information goes. And it's everything on that from, you know, who takes care of Fido to um, who's your attorney, to next of kin, the single most important thing every single time, um, and it has impacts readmission rates for hospitals and skilled nursing facilities is medicine reconciliation. So we have that means does what is in your closet match what you're taking, mm-hmm. um, and it's important that it does. So if you've written down your medications, it's important. This is a working document. Anytime right. those change. That needs to be reflected on this document. Mm -hmm. Um, Allergies, incredibly important. Someone has Parkinson's disease. The timing of getting their medication with Parkinson's is absolutely critical to their survival. And it it is about survival. It's not about, oh, we just like this information. This is life-saving information for emergencies on purpose, right? So this form gets filled out, um, and that's what we found. um, So the, the... Brevard County has has a lot of great organizations working together for this. Um, The Brevard Community Healthcare Coalition, um, who I'll say the coalition because it's way too much to say. (laughs) Right. Um, The coalition is a group of providers that see it from all different angles. Um, Some are in homes, some are in hospitals, some are, you know, the person that puts your your lift in the back of your car. It's the person that, you know, puts a ramp up to your doorway. It could be any provider, somebody bringing meals for wheels, nonprofits, for profits, you name it. We're, we're in this together. So what we saw when we looked at the county um, was that most of those readmissions were coming from home. So now let's take that group of people and put them into action because they're everywhere right. in everybody's life. So if we have to fill out this form, um, can the physician remind somebody mm-hmm. when they go for their physician? Could you make sure let's bring that form and we can write your new medications right on your form for you? Yeah. That's a real vital piece of this. We're not there yet, but we'll get there. Um, right now, I just want people to fill it out. So I don't want it to sit on a counter. So what we're doing as the coalition is we're going to senior fairs. We're setting up um, appointments. Teresa's setting up appointments. All of the members of the coalition are setting up for the public, for specific groups to actually complete these forms. Because sometimes when you're 90 your hands don't work quite as well. Mm -hmm. Your eyes don't see this quite as well. Mm -hmm. You don't remember, oh, do I have a living will or do I have a do not resuscitate order? Um, When that's vital. (laughs) That's bringing somebody back or not. You know, it's a a big deal. Um, And if we don't have that information, wrong decisions are going to get made through nobody's fault, but they're going to be not the ones you planned for. So this is a vital planning tool Mm -hmm. for seniors. So what we want to do is help them write it down, Mm -hmm. ask questions, have them go back and look for things. So in most of our sessions, we're saying bring your current list of medications. Mm -hmm. We'll help you write it in. 
Um, and so then you take this lovely little form once it's complete, because that's the hardest part. You zip it all together any way you want, and you put it right into the vial. You can put two in there. Um, so if it's a spouse, it could be, and it doesn't have to be seniors. We have people with special needs in our community that can't always speak mm -hmm. for themselves. We have a lot of families that do these for them as well. Um, so you put the little top back on them, and you asked me, the original question where you asked me, right. is this goes in your freezer. Why in your freezer? Because you're in and out of your refrigerator all the time, right? It could get moved around. It's in the back. If you put it in a place in your freezer, somebody's going to see it a lot more, um, a lot more quickly. Um, we don't want it on the outside of the refrigerator. So if you've got the workman over, they don't need to know who your attorney is or get that information, right? But if it's in your freezer, it's your mm -hmm. health information is protected a little bit more as mm -hmm. well. Um, and you can put a lot of stuff in there. If you have a particular doctor, you can put their business card right in here. It'll fit. So it's designed for that one sheet. What also is in it, which we already took out, is this lovely little green sticker um, that says Vial of Life. So it's not there just, um, you know, to say I voted. <laughs> it's not right. something you put. Um, there's a specific design. One of these goes on your front door where the first responders are going mm -hmm. to come in so that they know they can already save time because you have one of these in your freezer. Right. The other one is to put one on your refrigerator um, so that people know it's there. Because if we take that mm -hmm. same example, if somebody's fallen in their kitchen and they've knocked themselves unconscious, then this is our, they just turn around and there it is on your, on your refrigerator door. Right. Um, so that's an important piece of this too. And those pieces all come with this. It's absolutely free um, to, to anyone who wants to have one. The important part is that it gets used. Yes. Um, and that's the piece that the coalition is working with. So for example, if someone goes into the hospital, they've had a situation occur, they go into a nursing home, they're discharged. Mm -hmm. The discharge planner um, will say to that person, let's complete this because all the healthcare agencies have all mm -hmm. this information. Now right. they might not know who's doing, you know, taking care of Fido, but that's an easy fill in, right? Are they a veteran? Are there connections we can make for them that they can get more mm -hmm. support at home so that they don't come back? That's the point, right? Yeah. Don't come back. And one of the things that I wanted to point out, because I remember seeing an excellent presentation that uh, Teresa had put together uh, recently, and she explained one of, the, one of the concepts for putting this into the freezer is that uh, that actually ends up being one of the most secure places in your house. If you think about it, if there's a fire, if there's uh, damage mm -hmm. from a hurricane or something like that, quite honestly, that's a place it's not going to get, you know, blown away or it's the least likely place mm -hmm. to get blown away. So no matter what kind of a catastrophe uh, the first responders find themselves coming in the door for, that's going to be a very helpful tool for them because it probably is going to be where you put it or they would know to look for it because of the you had the stickers and stuff. We have some time. I do want us to go back and let's talk about the information and why this information is important because uh, this, this is so critical to getting these things down right. And the questions that you see on here are probably questions that you might imagine that you would answer if you were there. For example, who do you want us to contact? What's a, what's a person in case of emergency? Who do you want us to call? The reason we're here is there's an emergency, but we don't have anything else that tells us who to get in touch with. I, I see there's information which must be very, very helpful up and down the line. It's things that you would think of your insurance information so that the hospital knows where to begin. Maybe that will help them lead to what medical records or things. It, it's not just about the money, but it's also about getting the care, right? Absolutely. And you can take Teresa's situation when she's called in because there's nobody, you know, uh, you have a person that's now in the ER being treated. Hopefully the first responders have used this. The person has gotten to the right place. They know their allergies. Yep. They know their meds. They know their insurance information, the, the demographic information, if you will. Um, but what about can what the, what are the choices that this person right. can can have to return home? Can they afford to have somebody come right in a couple days a week to keep them home longer? Can they afford to go to assisted living? Right. Can they, you know, what? So one of the things that we've added to the list is banking information. Sure. And it's not your bank number. It's nothing confidential that somebody could have in the wrong hands. It's just what bank do you go to? Because as a DCF responder to a situation like that, whether somebody can't make their own decisions or they're not in a position health-wise to be mm -hmm. able to make them, Teresa can go find out from the bank Mm -hmm. if they have those resources. And it's going to determine the choices that you have. 
Yeah, and it's really, this form is very practically thought out because the questions it's asking for, you know, it wants to know things, you know, do you have somebody that's in charge of your health care? Who, who is that? Is it your doctor? Do you have somebody that's in charge of your finances that they need to know because if something needs to get addressed while you're uh, unable to? Uh, even the thing that people don't think about, suppose you live alone and, and you have this emergency and they're taking good care of you at the hospital, but now Fido is home alone and maybe Fido has a medication that has to happen every so often or certainly needs to be fed, walked, whatever other things are part, part of all that. So it's good to know about that. It's good to know the next, the, 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 the next people that they should call to say, look, you know, mom's in the hospital or whatever the case is. But perhaps maybe the most valuable is just the clues that even the first responders are going to get right away because they want to know, you know, are, do you have trouble hearing? Do you have trouble with your eyesight? Think about it. If a, if a first responder is trying to interact with you and they're trying to assess where you are, wouldn't knowing those things be of great benefit, I would think? Oh, absolutely. I think the first responder information is really related to those kinds of things, how to communicate with someone, mm -hmm. what they've just taken. You know, mm -hmm. Do we know to look for a, a dosage of somebody's blood pressure has bottomed out? You know, mm -hmm. Are they on blood pressure medication? Right. Um, what's the likelihood based on that prescription of how often, because it's dosage right. and time, right? Did they take it with breakfast this morning? Did they take it last night? They make other decisions based on knowing the details of medication. Absolutely. You know, I think that um, some people in the community have guardians. Sure. If you have a guardian and you're that that thought through and you're, you have somebody helping you, whether it's a case manager or mm -hmm. it's a, a guardian appointed by the, the court system, Somebody needs to call that person. Right. It needs to be written down. It's not generally the first thing on somebody's mind as a first responder. It's like, do you have a guardian? It's not your first question. But if you have one, it's important. If you have a healthcare surrogate, and all this, and you're this person now that's unconscious in your kitchen, right. you want that person making your decisions, not the first responders, right. not the hospital personnel. Right. You want that person involved in the discussion. And I think one of the things that we see as a coalition across the board. When somebody is admitted to the ER and, and goes to the ER and is admitted to the hospital, oftentimes the hospital doesn't even know who their primary care physician is. Right. So they're not looped in. Right. So they know that Mrs. Jones may fall often and it's because she has syncope episodes and they can walk the hospital through a treatment plan. But if you don't know the doctor, you don't know. You can't get all the information. Well, I was just thinking like even even questions that they ask you to mark. Like, do you wear glasses? Do you wear a hearing aid? Do you have dentures? All those things would seem like when that 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 person is running in to try to make sure you're okay, it sure seems like when they're trying to figure out what's going on, it would be helpful for them to know which of those things apply just because that would help in the assessment, I would think. Absolutely. And then you're asking for the things like, you know, just like you said, is there is there another medication they need to to be aware of or another situation they need to be aware of that would help them in in figuring out what's going on? Is it, you know, do you have diabetes? Do you have um, high blood pressure? Those kind of questions are so important. So I gather one of the most important things, and this is something that you really stressed that is so important with this with this new new effort or renewed effort, I guess renewed. is the probably yeah. way to say it for Vile of Life, is that we really want to have people help people get these forms done. Because if this is if you take the vial home and it doesn't get filled out, it was worthless. And you know, you say you can't really plan for an emergency, but this is one way you really Absolutely. can plan for an emergency. Because no matter what's going to happen, this is going to be a tool that could truly save your life. So, how? Let's talk just for the couple of moments that we have left. How do people get a hold of one of these? Where are some places they can go to say, "I need this in my refrigerator. I want to keep my family safe." Well, first of all, Brevard County Fire Rescue has them available. Okay. Across the board, always has, still does, will continue to have them. Um, all of our providers in the coalition, there's a group of about 30 partners right now, um, for everywhere from nursing homes to assisted livings. Um, we have them at Hibiscus Court. Um, mostly people live at Hibiscus Court, so I don't necessarily right. send someone home with a vial of life, although anyone that does a respite stay with me goes home with mm -hmm. a vial of life because Good. I have all that information. Mm -hmm. Someone that does a day program with me, I send them home. 
because they're going to go there. And this is probably an important question. When they go home, hopefully you guys are already sending them home because Completed. now you've got all this information. So that's really another benefit because, again, like we said, if you don't complete it, it's not going to be of help in that moment that it's really, really needed, right? Absolutely. And and as you say, you know, we think, what can we do better? How can we prepare? Um, and I think anyone that's had a health crisis, you know, mm -hmm. we were talking about someone yeah. earlier, when you've had a health crisis, you know what somebody needs to have in their hands. Yes. My point is, don't wait for a health crisis. Yeah. You know, um, we need to have them. Um, we could all have them in our homes. It would never hurt anyone to have them. But particularly, our coalition is concerned about seniors going mm -hmm. home because they get back in the system again. Um, and it, it's not it's not good for anyone uh, to be in that situation if they don't have to be. So mm -hmm. diabetics, perfect example. We have we call in, in the field, we say there's a high high risk mm -hmm. patients, right? It typically are people that have um, diabetes, Parkinson's, um, complicating factors. Um, because if you've just been that person again in the kitchen that fell right. and hit their head, you know, was that person, you know, making dinner or were they walking in there to get something because their blood sugar was off? Now, right. if a first responder doesn't know they're diabetic, now people wear pretty little bracelets or necklace, you know, right. have it tattooed these days, you right. know. Right. Um, but if you don't have that, how are they supposed to know what to treat you with? When yeah. you get to the hospital, the dosages, the medications, they're different because of those high risk medications Absolutely. that they're on. Um, so particularly for those folks um, that need communication and it's of the utmost importance in the moment. Um, these are just important, but any, I would say any senior in this county should have one. And it's our obligation as a coalition, as a community, um, as citizens, as neighbors, as help, daughters and sons. Help get, the, help get, get these this out done. out there. Check, make sure, ask your mom, is it in your freezer? Wait, wait, <laughs> this, is, this is so important. Let's hold up our vial of life and say, Please be sure that you get involved in this. So uh, we're out of time, but we want, really want you to find out about the Vile of Life and take action on this. We thank you so much for joining us for Helping Seniors TV. I'm Carrie Fink. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Steckler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would have welcomed your call at 321-473-7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.